Ah yes, Poland. <laughs> Welcome back to the series of my Europe trip from this summer. We visited some great places, met some great people, ate some great food, but today is the finale of it all. In this video we drive all the way from the Slovak-Polish border back home to Tallinn, Estonia. So I thought I'd split this video into the vlog itself and then the conclusion plus the facts and questions rather than a Q&A. So only burning questions and even thoughts you may have inside your head get answered. Maybe. Anyway, last episode we left off right at the border between Slovensko Republiku and the Zhezhech. Now you know what? F you. I'll show you how I pronounce Polish. Zhezhech polite Polska kurde. Dzień dobry dranie. Gdzie moje pierogi? Or how? How about this? Kurwa je perdoli jak dzieje spuju kto ci prawko da. We begin our journey as we cross into this land, and right as we do, the mountains start to disappear. <laughs> After some driving, we enter Krakow. After lots of driving in town, which shouldn't come as a surprise as it is Poland's second largest, we check into our Airbnb, which was absolutely incredible. It's a shame the only photo I took there was of this strange sounding Hungarian onion cream. And then we went to town. Hey, 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 so Krakow, Krakow, or Krakow is definitely one of Poland's most well-known cities, perhaps only behind Warsaw. The city's origins go back to the Stone Age, when the first settlement was built here on Wawel Hill. In 1241 though, the Mongols took over and did what the Mongols did best. Destruction. After two failed attempts to do some more sweet sweet ravaging, the Mongols were eventually kicked out of the area, as their own empire at the time decided to put a Charlemagne. The city's most well-renowned era is during the city's Golden Age, however, when it served as the capital of both the Kingdom of Poland and later on the polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. However, cause like the bubonic plague and geographical issues made it clear that the capital had to be moved to the rapidly growing Warsaw. But then the PLC got trolled, the trollers got trolled by the frog eater, and then the frog eaters got trolled by the previous trollers, which resulted in Krakow becoming a free city, which was annexed into the Austrian Empire. Yet still they enjoyed a wide degree of autonomy and they became the cultural hub of Poland, much more liberal than the rest of the country. This lingered on to the Second Polish Republic, until the Bratwurst enjoyers took over and um, removed the large local Jewish population. Today, the old town of Krakow is placed under the UNESCO heritage list, which doesn't even say anything anymore. In any case, there's no better way to experience all this history than to go there and see it in person. First off, statues, kebab shops and historical buildings galore. Even as at the main old town, the first major attraction we walked past was the Krakow Barbican, which is pretty cool I guess. Right next to it lies the old town gates, and the main avenue that leads to the old market square. Of course, this is pretty mainstream, so you have souvenir shops right beside each other, but I couldn't resist my urge of getting some drip. Then there's the famous, MASSIVE market square. Of course, right there is the city's, if not the whole country's most famous attraction, the St. Mary's Basilica, the damn pretty Roman Catholic church with two different domes and apparently a beautiful interior, but unfortunately I didn't have time to go inside, so I hope to return soon to see it more thoroughly. Right by it there is also a monument to some nationalist writer and poet, pretty cool. I mean, come on. Every town square needs some sort of monument. In the middle of the square also lies the Cloth Hall, a big covered market that was probably open on my stupid ass didn't go inside to explore. Moving on. Wait, what is the tourist trap again? Uh, this is a nice tram and a very nice church. This oh is Poland God, after all. Until we reached the one and only Babel Royal Castle. At the time it was probably closed, which is a shame because there was a really cool looking church inside the castle that would have been awesome to see. From the Babel Castle onwards is also the mighty Vistula that dissects through Poland and the former Jewish, now hip Casimir's corner. Named after, yeah, you guessed it. A famous Polish monarch. One of these places and more I didn't have time to see as I was only there for one night. But just a general vibe of the city I got telling me that I need to go back. But yeah, that would be Krakow. Definitely my top 3 favorite European cities list, even after I had such a short stay there. Maybe I'm biased because I love Poland so much. Anyway, it was time to get going again. After seeing the chat who saved Vienna on the side of the highway, <laughs> We get going from what is near the Slovak border up towards yeah, Lithuania. Now, despite Krakow and Warsaw being the two largest cities in Poland, there is still no actual big highway connected to you. Like, what? You have top notch highways going to fucking everywhere, but not the big, big Krakow. Anyways, but the fastest road passing through Kielce lacks in six lane highways, it makes up for nice nature and small villages. But my Polish cultural experience meter has still not been satisfied. I needed to taste the greatest East Central European delicacy of all. <laughs> Pierogies. 
So somewhere between bumfucker and nowhere, we go to a little comic block filled town called Scottish 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 Kam Kam Yenna. Yes. Okay. So what am I doing in a Scottish Kam Well, apparently there was a really good pierogies restaurant here, and so we went to check it out. Now this is not some tourist attraction that would make this impossible to pronounce town the new European capital of culture. Of what to think about it, it just looks like an amusement. So why not? It is a place only locals go to, and a few them Estonians. But oh boy, yes, Jenny, yes, Dobre. I will go to this funky sounding town just for these pierogies. This food can only be rivaled if Chewappi in terms of great taste that I tried on this trip. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay there forever though, so we left Skarsisko Kamiena and headed towards Warsaw. But we were not to visit the city though, but just go past it. And what do you know? It's rush hour, so even going around will cost you at least 45 minutes to leave the Warsaw Zone. After receiving our curse of being stuck in a traffic jam in the 13th largest city in Europe, we do not head to what we are stuck like your average person, but rather turn onto some small forest roads because Google Maps said it was faster. It was nice though, as we drove through a national park which was really pretty at sunset. It didn't take long from there until we got back on the good roads, as good as it can be because we have just re-entered the politics. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll be, I'll be and I didn't really record anything. I shortly after we entered Lithuania, I fell asleep and woke up literally as soon as we crossed into Estonia, at the place where it all started, our countryside near Varu. At the countryside we rested for the day until we went all the way back home to Thailand. Once we reached our home, my souvenir connection expanded rapidly. And of course, this was the best and most eye-opening trip of my life. 15 countries, 19 cities and towns, and 6,729 kilometers traveled. What an experience it was to share with you guys. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I will now answer some of the most common questions you may have about this trip. Question number one, and by far the most asked one, where do you get your money to travel? So contrary to popular belief, I am not the son of a rich Russian oligarch living in Monaco. In fact, I come from a completely average slash mid-wage income family. Many of the trips I went on were because we used opportunities that we get every now and then. For example, my trips to Canada and Ireland were both possible because my parents went to work there for a bit of time. And the people organizing the work abroad think finance these trips. This road trip was also one of these occasions. Knowing this, we saved up loads of funds and managed to do a road trip to Italy and back. Because come on, flying in and flying back shortly after would have been way less cool than this. So I hope that answers it. Question number two. When exactly did this trip happen? I started the journey from Buru on August 19th and then ended back up in Tallinn on August 31st. Question number three. Did I have any places I would have wanted to visit but didn't have time to? Yeah. Timisoara, Belgrade and Munich especially. Question number four. And this is another crucial question. What's next for this channel? Well, as I don't want this channel to immediately return to limbo like it was before and even during the series, I am making a vlog on Lithuania next as my second greatest highlight of 2022, at least travel-wise, happened there, and you'll see why when it releases. Helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> After that, I'll probably not have as much time to do these vlogs, but I do have a number of footage that I recorded last year, and besides that, I'm going on a number of travels this year as well. And the last question, what is your favorite country, either from this trip or from your travels entirely? Well, my favorite country is obviously... <laughs> But yeah, that would be my dumb little series on my road trip from August 2022. I sincerely thank all of you for watching this series and supporting me. And special thanks to the people I met up with who made my experience just that much better. There is also a uh, bad day. A bad day. <laughs> <laughs> European capital of culture. Open. Open. No, Open. Know. No. <laughs> I'm also thankful to the people who helped me with making these videos. Me and Dirty and LM. We wanna Magyarska Srachka plus Triano Ratio No Kofula. Oh, strange. Mamma mia, fanculo. Il Trentino Alto Adige e Italiano. Fanculo. This was my dream, and I'm glad I got to goofily present it to you. So, yeah, see you in Lithuania. Kurva! Sada uradim drugo, da uzmem konopče da se obesim ovaj vetrogenerator.